You are officially listening to KPSU, Portland's college radio station. We've been broadcasting since 1994 on the Portland State campus and streaming worldwide 24-7 at www.kpsu.org, where all of our fabulous shows are available for podcast and download. This is DJ Rochelle. You're tuned in to Live Friday, where we host a live band in the studio every week. This week, we are fortunate enough to have PSU TV streaming video of the band's performance. You can check it out at psu.tv slash live if you want to watch them play. And I'm now about to throw them live on air. Here they are, Blood Owl. Thank you very much, Portland, Oregon. Thank you, KPSU. Thank you, too. Thanks a lot. was digging deep back to the first record. We're going to do something a little more current from the second record. Uh, take it away, Michael.
song was Eating Diamonds. This next song, Jake, which album is this from? How many albums do you have? Same, same one as, as that track. Uh, we did a double album two years ago uh, called Raised Like Wolves, Released Like, uh, ra Raised Like Whales, Released Like Wolves. And uh, Raised Like Wolves, Released <laughs> Like Whales. I always get it that's confused. It's the third one. Every time. Uh, that's why I, I told you to do it. I thought you would <laughs> nail it. So that, this one's uh, Sink and Ship. We do know the title. Yeah! 
We played three songs already. No, no, now we're gonna do. Now we're gonna do. It's a new one. Anyway, this new song is called "Bastards." It's from our upcoming release. We are gonna play uh, live uh, in about a month to release it to the public and to the world, and we're very excited about it. Uh, we just got the masters back, and they sound amazing. Uh, without further ado, let's rock this. Rock this okay. stuff. I guess I gotta. I gotta drop, right? Gotta drop it. This is our first radio show, so bear with us.
go to the next one. So, what does it say next? So this next song is coming up, uh, uh, upcoming uh, new album. It's called Desert Vampires. Oh, the album name is <laughs> Swimming with Swords. And we've been working on this thing for a long time. So this next one is Desert Vampires. Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your bums and your mums. Too much. You've gone too far. just warmed up. Now we're just going to play for the next three hours. We're going to turn into a jam band right now. Let's do it. I had a dream once about it. We're going to start with this song that's probably the heaviest, dirtiest song we've written to date, and it's called The Giant, and uh, check it out.
we get an encore going on?
This is a really bad idea. I'm, I'm going to put that out there for all the listeners out there. This is a really bad idea. I do not approve. But I was I'm outvoted gonna, I'm gonna sponsor, again. I'm going to sponsor bad ideas right now. <laughs> It's already, it's already started. The badness has already started. in just a moment, but in the meantime, we got to thank the people that helped make this station possible <laughs> and tell you about some cool events going on around town. KPSU is brought to you in part by the PSU Bike Hub. A Bike Hub membership is only available to PSU students and faculty, where you get access to their tools and equipment, and they'll help you work on your bike. Of course, they also offer numerous free workshops and clinics. They sell bike accessories, they offer lock removal, secure bike parking permits, bike loans, and of course, professional service and repair. This hour of music on KPSU is sponsored in part by Lagunitas Brewing Company. You can find out all about their unique brews and other brewery happenings online at lagunitas.com. That's L-A-G-U-N-I-T-A-S dot com. Glad to support KPSU Radio, Lagunitas Brewing Company, keeping the pub in public broadcasting. A ranger station. I'd like to report a bear hug. Okay. I put out my campfire and Smokey Bear hugged me. So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh-huh. Yeah, but he's just letting you know you did good. Bear hug from Smokey Bear. Status update. I'm gonna let you go now. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Sponsored by the U.S. Forest Service Ad Council and your state forester. Do you feel too tired to make it through class alive? Are midterms and finals stealing your sleep? With five locations in Portland today, Stumptown has been serving the community with directly traded and locally roasted coffee since 1999, bringing the tastes of coffee beans from around the world to your backyard. For more information on their coffee and brewing techniques, visit StumptownCoffee.com. 
now once again. This is DJ Rochelle here at KPSU, and I have in the booth ready to chat now, Blood Owl. Hello, guys. How's it going? All right. (laughs) Now that you're all sufficiently warmed up and ready to hang out. (laughs) First of all, thank you guys so much for being here. Absolutely. It was our pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. It's always a fun time to hang out, but it's even more fun when you get to actually play and enjoy the music. Yeah, it was really fun. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me what you guys have had going on lately as far as like shows and recording. Yeah, it's really uh, pretty exciting. Actually, we just finished a record we've been working on for over a year, actually. We started recording it early last spring, uh, 2013. Uh, In the practice space where we were practicing, we just set up mics and started going to town. Uh, Me, with the help of these guys, recorded it all ourselves. Um, just finished up. Make, I mean, we took way too long mixing. But <laughs> that's Total uh, journey. It yeah. was like Lord of the Rings long <laughs> journey. Okay, we haven't even made it to Mordor yet. Also, <laughs> we're also big nerds. Just, just FYI. Well, yeah. some of us. It's, it, it, <laughs> well, one of us. Is. It's hard to. Uh, it, it's just hard to be satisfied that we kept tweaking the sounds and everything. Uh, yeah. But a coworker of mine, Dan Marcus, he is an amazing engineer, and he mastered it for us. We just got it back, and we all agreed it sounds amazing, so very excited. How do you know when a song's really done? So you could tweak and work on it forever. Uh, yeah, it's well, true. we our, uh, our last album we were pretty happy with, but we knew this one we wanted it to be heavier and just, like, um, just fuller. So we tried to, like, spend some time with the drums, and we did extra guitar parts, which we didn't do before, just to try to make everything, yeah, like I said, just bigger and, like... Um, it's definitely like heavier and yeah, darker we wanted than to anything go, we ever exactly, did before. Yeah. We wanted it to just be louder too. So, I, I think partly in answer to your question, like how do you know? Uh, we, we all kind of had a couple albums or songs in our head or, or we had talked about it, like bands that we really respect and like that we wanted it to sound like. I think once it started to actually sound like bands that we love, like yeah. Deftones and Under Oath and stuff like that, once it started to sound like those records, we were like, oh, we're, we're pretty much here, you know? So, tell me about what made the decision to go a heavier route where you wanted a heavier sound uh i guess i can say that well our last (laughs) our last (laughs) album was was split in two so it was like a kind of a light and a dark side and um i mean i think we were all happy with both sides of them but um i don't know this one i guess we just were we're having yeah, it just seemed like a natural direction we wanted to go to because we haven't we haven't pushed ourselves as, as heavy as this heavy before. So um, I guess we could have gone lighter, but it didn't. I know Matt. You know Matt's like our our, our you know singer and screamer, and he, I think that there was like that sort of like energy we wanted to push towards, like the intensity. I guess so. It was like louder, darker, and heavier, just to see what it sounded like. And we were and, you know and Jake wrote that song, the giant, which was like the almost the last song we played and. You know, after like after hearing that, it was like, okay, we have to like step it up. Like we have to actually just play heavier than we ever have before. And and we were, you know, it was like a little more like doom, like sludgy kind of. I don't know, but it's whatever. Yeah, just exploring sounds we never have because we've never played any of that yeah, kind of music. Yeah, exactly. So exploring those tones and those like song worlds mm-hmm. made us excited, you know. And it, and we had done the light stuff, and we had done middle ground and. This was going to that direction. That yeah, it can even it can I mean, we can even try to go heavier too, really, if we want to. But I want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think our all of our personal lives have a lot to do with it too. I mean, there there's been a lot of changes within the last year and just different aspects of who we are and who we really want to be in this world. You know, and I think exploring different sound worlds and and uh, the heavier side of of music is uh, you know somewhat. Um, What's the word like? Relaxing, I guess, or meditative, I guess, or yeah. something. You know. Yeah. So it's your outlet. Yeah, yeah. helps you have to cope with a lot of stuff that's effed up. You know, makes you really just go. Mm-hmm. Thank you for heavy music. <laughs> like, yeah. I drive yeah. home from work and just blast music so loud in my car, and it, it windows roll down, and it's so helpful to release with those energies. And practicing these songs and recording them was the same feeling. Like, it just felt good. Yeah. As you mentioned, this isn't 
the type of music you've played in the past. What kind of music, uh, other than this band, have you played in the past? Oh, well, um, you know, Mike used to be in kind of a, a pop punk band. Yeah, it was like a 90s, like a Toad Easy kind of <laughs> band, you know, just kind of <laughs> playful, like kind of like Sonic Youth even. The, the singer liked Green Day a lot, so it was kind of some of that kind of stuff. Completely so. different from yeah, us. Yeah, very different. <laughs> yeah. Very, very different. We stole him away from that band. <laughs> <laughs> but then Richard and I have both done a lot of different projects and a lot of stuff that's really soft and really emotional. Yeah. Um, he has this band called Mermaid Problem, and I have a band called Terrorbird, and they're both you know, like indie rock, really soft stuff. That so we have a lot of that outlet, <clears throat> and this is the outlet where we can really get uh, get down and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tell me what you have coming up. We have a show. We have a couple shows. Mm-hmm. CD um, release. Yeah, we're gonna release that CD. We're putting all the artwork together right now and gonna get it produced and everything. Uh, so. That is July 25th mm-hmm. at uh, Katie, O'Brien's. Katie O'Brien's, which is out on Northeast Sandy. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, always is releasing a CD for sure. So um, Yeah, we're playing with our good friends, uh, Revenge, too, and they're they're really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Always and then fun to be play fun. With them. We and got that No Fest show. Yeah, we're playing. We just found out we're playing No Fest in September. <clears throat> so we're it, excited about that. It's kind of a counterculture fest to Music Fest Northwest. And it's bands all day, right? Isn't it like 20, yeah, 30 like bands? Yeah, there's like 30 bands or something. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that's out St. John's? Yeah, St. Yeah. John's area. Yeah, when you said no fest event, immediately I thought North Portland. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it sounds like I think it, yeah. it yeah, matches as well. Uh, you know, we may add some more shows uh, You know, this summer and fall too. I think definitely on the heels of a new album we want to – play out a lot and we're yeah. all as we played today i mean we feel like we're ready it feels good it, there's a lot of energy and uh it's fun it's just fun <coughs> we just love doing it we just love playing live that's where we really shine i think yeah what are the far future plans like year or two down the road probably record more stuff um, yeah we've you know, talked we, about recording we actually have new song. we're sitting on like two you know two or three new the last song we played was a you know, it's not on this album, but that's we're kind of like rounding that song out, and it's it's really fun to play. So we're gonna it's the you know that'll be one song probably off of it, and uh, we have some other songs that are a little different. But I think yeah, we want to push you know push ourselves writing, di- you know writing new songs, different kinds of songs, and try to like um, yeah just push ourselves as musicians. And and um, like I know I know personally that like I want us to. Um, just yeah, try new things. Exp- like not be afraid to experiment with, um, with with stuff. That, like you know, I don't know, like new time signatures or something. Like just more technical stuff sometimes. Um, but just I think yeah, just Blood Owl has just always been about not being one thing. Mm-hmm. I think we can all agree on that. We've all just tried to be, yeah, more or whatever sounds good to us. We I don't think, limit ourselves at all. I I think it'd be cool to um, maybe Man, my incorporate voice is going. <laughs> incorporate some <laughs> all that yelling. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to incorporate some, uh, like maybe some more instrumentation. Like if we end up getting another keyboard player or like if we play with strings or something like that, just like, you know, I don't know, trying new things. Like we could just see where, where it goes, you know? Yeah. And, and I think we're looking to maybe play out of town a little too, maybe some Seattle, Eugene, some of that kind of stuff, just to kind of spread it out a little bit and just see how it's received, you know? Yeah. yeah we've talked about a lot of things and I, I don't think anything's off the table. But, but we're pretty mellow, too. We're pretty mellow guys, and we, we just want to have fun doing it, and that's the, the point, I think. We're not trying to, you know, be anything that we're not. Yeah. So. I know one of the challenges uh, any band that's not an indie rock band has in Portland is trying to book gigs as well as promote. And oh, yes. <laughs> how do you guys meet that challenge? It's been a challenge, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I, I've, uh, I grew up in Michigan, and there's a pretty big hardcore scene out in the Midwest. And I've noticed, like, as soon as I came out here, that uh, indie rock reigns supreme out here. And it's, it's just hard to uh, get that underground hardcore metal following out here for some reason. It's just tough. Yeah. yeah you know, one thing, uh, Miguel, who helped book our, uh, the show, um, you know, mentioned right off the bat, he was like, wow, yeah, I haven't heard a band like you in Portland in a while. <laughs> He's like, there's nothing like mm-hmm. this. And and I think that's, we're so unique that it makes it challenging. 
<coughs> but, uh, you know, at the same time, we all are deep in the music scene and we all have a lot of friends who play a lot of music. And so we just try and book up with bands that are similar, uh, you know, enough. And have, we've been around enough of that to just not be phased by playing with bands that don't really sound like us yeah. and just going with the flow. So uh, that's part of it. I feel like things might turn around too, like, you know, maybe not like in a big way, but I think that there's, yeah, I mean, there's, it's like, it can't be indie rock forever. It's gotta be like, there's gotta be, you know, like changes in this, in the scene eventually. And I think, that, I think that if we just keep not necessarily like that, we're going to break through or anything, but like that, that, you know, the scene will, the like scenery will change and there'll be different kinds of bands that are, that are more like acceptable, like weirder bands or harder bands or just yeah. stuff that's like, you know, it's not because it, it's not about just going out and like listening to like pretty stuff all the time. You know, sometimes it's you know, there's so many different kinds of music. So well, there's some I mean, you know, one band you mentioned when we were uh, kind of setting up uh, that had played here, Ninja. You know, I mean, they play a type of metal that's that's pretty popular. Mm -hmm. You know, Red Fang is out there, Old Kingdom. I mean, there's mm -hmm. some bands that really have yeah. those kind of sounds. Definitely. And I think they're they're more of a classic metal kind of <clears throat> that that's popular. We, we just kind of fit somewhere in the middle of this weird We're just punk weird. metal yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. We're the oddballs. <laughs> but I, I think there's something to find in that that people will like to. What's the hope for when you play a show? Don't mess up. <laughs> for, get free drink tickets. <laughs> Try to meet a girl, maybe. <laughs> I love uh, to see those, uh, are the, those are the check, three. Check, check. <laughs> I like I like a nice sized crowd, and I like to see people getting into it. You know, mm -hmm. a little bit of head banging is good. A little bit of dancing. Yeah, it's it's hard to uh, find those people. <laughs> yeah, we're you know I think the main thing for us that is kind of a win every time is to you know maybe introduce ourselves to a couple new people each time we play, or or convert a few people that maybe have never seen us or, or different bands that go, wow, you guys really rock, you know, and we'll be like, yeah, man, let's play again. So that, I think that's a win mm -hmm. every time we play and, and somebody new is able to see us and, and, and dig it. Yeah. I can speak personally as I, I know a couple of you seen me at shows around town cause I go to a lot of concerts. Um, it's a little bit awkward sometimes when I've never heard a band to actually go up and be like, Hey, I've just heard your music as of today, but I liked it. How awkward yeah. is it for you to talk to a fan who's never heard you before and was like, so I just randomly decided to walk into the venue today. Oh, I don't think it's yeah. not awkward at all. I, I love it. I love it. It doesn't happen very often, but I mean, we embrace it all. It's, we'll yeah. take what we can get really. Come hang out with us. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool. We'll be at the bar merrier. in the stage. You know, I think that's one, that's one of the things as well. I mean, we, we all like to have a, a good time and you, mm -hmm. you know, we, we can, uh, we like to party and, and have fun. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it, <laughs> that sounds bad. It's not like are we, that. Are, are we turning party. into Andrew WK right now? No. <laughs> Is that what we party, were all party, about? Party, party, uh, No, but I mean, we, we like to have a good time. And I think yeah. that nobody should ever feel, you know, afraid of threatened just to say what's up. And, uh, you know, we'll even go up to people and be like, hey, did you like it? Was it good? <laughs> if we don't know you. So. We make it awkward. <laughs> yeah. I it. Shifting gears a little bit. Uh, talk to me about kind of music you've been listening to lately. Uh, I, mean, I mentioned uh, <laughs> sorry, I, music. I, I mentioned uh, a couple bands that we wanted to, uh, you know, aspire to to, to be like. I, I recently revisited and and re found this Under Oath album to find the Great Line, and I think that's one of the best albums I've pretty much ever heard <laughs> recently. Mm -hmm. I've listened to it so many times, like wore it out on my on my iPhone. Um, for me, I mean, I, I've just been listening to a lot of hardcore like that. Uh, Jake got me into Thrice, and I've been listening to them a lot, drumming to them and just trying to get better. I always find myself drumming to Coheed and Cambria for some reason. I think <laughs> the poppiness of it, the kind of drive that it's always going forward. But I also grew up listening to like hip hop and Marvin Gaye and a lot of other stuff that's super not rock at all. So it's just. Yeah. I listen to everything. I listen to old Sam Cooke and all kinds of all kinds of music. But so rock is is kind of the newer thing to me. I'm just trying to get into some bands like that. I've been rocking Reggie and the Full Effect lately. Oh, it's so good. And yeah. Lana Del Rey's new album. Oh my Don't gosh! Don't kill me for that. Wow, it's so good though. It's that's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. a guilty pleasure, but it's so good. 
It's funny. I love to do hardcore music. I love to do metal and scream. But man, I, I you, get down you with got some a soft spot. Lana Del Rey. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to, I've been on like a big Paul McCartney kick lately. Like, boo. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, like it, with him and the Beatles, but also his solo stuff. But just, uh, yeah, I've just been really like, uh, just really loving his like songwriting. It's, it's just so like, it just blows me away. It's, I don't know. He's a Beatle, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y- you know, there's, there's so much music. It's crazy. I've been getting into a lot of electronic music lately too. And uh, like, like female pop bands with electronic stuff like churches and stuff yeah. like that and that stuff's really rad uh, i got this those um, guys are cool i got this drum machine uh, it's called uh, spark and it's computer drum machine but it's really fun and i uh, just making songs on that like <laughs> <laughs> weird stuff so you mentioned listening for the songwriting what what do you guys normally pick out when you're listening to music um, I mean, it depends. There's so many. I listen to different kinds of bands for different reasons, you know? Like, I'll listen to, you know, sometimes you listen to, like, the, you know, the lyrics are really great and, like, their stories are really great, so it doesn't really matter if the music's that complicated because the stories are there and the words are there. But sometimes it's the opposite, you know? You don't really care about the words or the lyrics. It's, like, the structure of the music is really interesting. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. There's, I think, like... It just depends on what you want out of each band or whatever artist you're looking for. But, I mean, I, I think that good songwriting just kind of shows itself, you know, like, it, no matter what. Like, I mean, I don't know, like, like uh, I've been listening. I, I've, I've loved the Ramones for years and years, but uh, it's taken me, like, years to realize how great of songwriters they really were. Like, there's... It seems really simple, but they're... Like, Joey Ramone could just, like, write, a, like, these songs that were just, like unbelievable like there's just there's so much there's so much going on in the, in these stories and in these these little like lines and uh anyways so yeah it just depends on what like what kind of mood you're in and like what definitely mood yeah what kind of like how sure. classic you like like i said I've, I've been listening to the beatles a lot too like like how classic you want to go with it you know if you want it to be like if you want to hold it to hold up and be like you know structured in a really classic way or if you like the weirder stuff or like the more experimental stuff you know it's just like but yeah, good, I mean, a good song is a good song regardless of like the structure. I mean, it'll 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 cut through like all of the you know the stuff, bull, the bull stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, what Rich, what Rich is saying, may, you know, uh, holds a lot of weight because there's so much music now. Um, it's just we're all inundated it with it, you know, through and through with you know, I mean, everybody being on car commercials and whatnot you know, through to like Spotify and, yeah. and everything, just being able to access anything at any time, it kind of, you do have to wade through a lot of the crap to get to the good stuff. Yeah. And so picking those out and pulling them apart, you know, that's a funny thing. Like I never used to be a person that would download like a single or, or individual songs off records. I would always be like, the record is important, the whole record. And you have to listen to it front to back. And I still think that's true for some certain records but there's so much far and few in between now. Yeah. I'll download individual well, songs a lot more often now. Plus, you know, it's, I mean, I hate to say it, but songwriting is, it's not as, it's not what it used to be. And I, I know I sound like a dad or something like, like, oh, the 60s were the best, you know, but it's true. I mean, I really, I will argue that all day that, that um, people used to, it, people try, I mean, I think people took, it was more of a craft and they spent more time on songs and it was, you know, and it shows like some of these songs hold up over time. And it's like because they um, well, this is I, I won't go like super into it, but I'll just say this real quick that um, when Bob Dylan wrote uh, The Times Are Changing, when Sam Cooke first heard that song, he was so blown away by that song that he spent a year working on one song because he was like, OK, well, this guy just wrote like the best song I've ever heard. So I can't write a song that's any less good. And he spent a year working on a song, and his label was like, "Where's the new song? Where's the new song?" He's like, "It's not ready yet. It's not ready." And he and it's like that. I I can't think of it like that happening right now because it's like what who who is like the Dylan now who's like raising the bar that high where it's like, "Oh my God, look at these songs!" Like we have to like go back and you know. Fiber. <laughs> Anyways, that's a little bit of a tangent, but <laughs> what I'm saying is that I mean, there's still good songwriters out there, but 
Yeah. Um, it's not what it used to be. Like it, people really put a lot into songs back then. It was it was it was a different landscape, I guess. You know, I think there's a, there's another part of it too that that is a, a definite in, big part of what you're talking about, and it's the recording process and and everything. Like what what we do is digital recording into a computer. You can cut and splice and paste and move stuff, and you have a, infinite tracks and. It, it creates a palette that's unique and different and allows for a lot of really cool stuff. But it's not like it was where you had to know your song mm -hmm. front to back and record it once all the way through, mm -hmm. you know, or even with four tracks or eight tracks in, you know, in the 60s, like you were saying. Yeah. You, you just had a more limited space and you would play it over and over and over and sing it over and over and over to get it right. And so it had to be that good. It doesn't feel like it has to be that good nowadays for somebody to release something yeah you know what i mean i guess that's it, with everybody having home recording and stuff it's the mm -hmm. the bar went down like you're saying yeah i mean there's, there's also the different timeline involved <clears throat> where you had to pay a lot of money for studio time and you were limited on the amount of time you'd spend <clears throat> in the studio to cut a track versus now as you mentioned home yeah. recording yeah it's whenever you want to you can put it online yeah yeah i mean that's definitely the how music is now it's it's a lot of it is doing it yourself and doing it out of your bedroom and or you know I mean we did it in our basement which is awesome yeah and we have yeah. and we, we accept that too but you know it's it's a uh, I love it I mean, we don't have the money to go into a studio yeah, that's, that's I mean we, we would raise it and we would do it but it would be way more complicated and we wouldn't be able to do yeah. what we've done yeah it makes it possible for us to be able to do what we're doing yeah. you know which is that being really said though thing. we should someday we really would like to do a, a like fully studio album just sure. because you know like we so many of the bands that we love you know they're they're on labels and, and they're able to have these really pristine recordings and it you know it would be expensive for us to do but i feel like it would it's it's an it, it would be like really refreshing to hear us in that setting if we can afford it you know I think no, someday in the future, let's do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. We're almost out of time, so real quick, uh, can I get you guys to do a quick station ID? Just, this is Blood Owl, and you're listening to KPSU. Heck yeah, yeah. this is Blood Owl, and you're listening to KPSU. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, anything else you wanted to mention before I kick you out of here? We love our fans, and yeah. uh, we encourage you to show up to our show because it's going to be a lot of fun. CD release. Yeah, July 25th. Please come out. Katie O'Brien's. Uh, you know, and also, you know, keep listening to KPSU because it's a great station and we just really enjoy you having us and thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Michelle. And Michelle. you could also find you guys, was it facebook.com slash Blood Owl Band? You got That's it. Correct. Yeah. We have and Bandcamp? Bandcamp too. Same thing, I think. Or at least you can search through there for Blood Owl. And Everything is linked through our Facebook page. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Is that the best spot to find about upcoming shows? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yes, well, it is. Once again, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Going to catch you off now and remind everyone that you're tuned in to KPSU, Portland's College Radio, which is available at www.kpsu.org. You can also check us on the Android app for KPSU or the TuneIn app on any Apple product. This show is available for podcast online. You can also check out the entire video feed on PSU.TV. Thank you to PSU TV for hosting that. Stay tuned for Symphonic Sympathy. And this has been DJ Rochelle on Live Friday.